Welcome to Taking the Higher Road, a podcast by Driver Reach in partnership with FreightWaves. I'm your host, Jeremy Raymer, founder of Driver Reach, a modern software solution at the intersection of recruiting and compliance. With over 20 years in the industry, uh, both on the carrier side as well as the vendor side, I bring a wealth of expertise around all things recruiting, retention, and compliance. And on this show, I interview industry experts and thought leaders who bring their insights to the driver lifecycle as we discuss the industry's greatest challenges from recruitment and retention to the realm of regulatory compliance. Your positive feedback keeps us motivated, so don't forget to rate and review Taking the Higher Road on your preferred platform. This week, I'm honored to have on the show, for the very first time, one of the best people you could work alongside for nearly seven years, Sam Bloomquist, Chief Technology Officer for Driver Reach. Welcome to Taking the Higher Road, Sam. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm really excited to be here. Been a big fan for a long time, <laughs> watching the podcast. I'm glad to finally get a chance to jump on here and talk with you. Well, uh, you've been with Driver Reach since January of 2017. You've uh, been in a you've been a critical component of Driver Reach's growth and success, and will surely play a key role in the ongoing development and evolution of the company. I'd like to learn a bit about your background. What got you into the industry? Besides me twisting your arm, and uh, and ask you to share some you know recent really important updates from the development side, specifically around compliance. And of course, we'll also answer a question from one of our listeners during the deeper dive segment. Does all of that work for you? Sounds great. Awesome. Well, uh, first thing is, as is the custom, we always ask if there's a particular book that you've read that's had a lasting impact on you or how you think or maybe how you operate. Could be recent or, or even an older one or, or more than one. Yeah, I love this question. I, I can't just answer with one, but I will pick two books um, that are related to each other. Uh, so the first one I read recently, it's an old book, but new, new for me, was Victor Frankl's uh, Man's Search for Meaning. I know that's a book you've read too, but we haven't had a chance to discuss it yet. Uh, so I'll have to put that on the calendar sometime. But um, I really love this book. It's a book about his experiences in uh, concentration camps uh, during World War II. And then as he came out of that, he developed a whole new uh, methodology for psychology that's all about searching for meaning in life. And so uh, one of the things that I took away from that was that um, in his view, there are three ways to find meaning in life. Uh, so really big question, what's uh, life all about? Um, but he said the number one is through responsibility to someone or something. Um, that can even be a principle or an idea. Uh, number two is through love. Uh, and number three is through suffering, uh, specifically when that perspective of the suffering turns it into a triumph or a human achievement. But as I thought about that, I thought, you know, really the second two, love and suffering, just lead to responsibility. Uh, you you love someone or something, and then you take responsibility for something uh, related to that, and then that gives you meaning. And you suffer through something, and you try to turn it into a triumph, and <laughs> there's responsibility involved in that, and so that's that's meaning. And so that's really been an epiphany for me. I've been thinking a lot about our life and our company and like uh, just how I can find more responsibility and how I can encourage and give others chances to take responsibility because that's what it's all about. And that sort of leads into the second book, uh, Seth Godin's new book, uh, Song of S Significance. I read that earlier this year. Um, and it's a fascinating book. It's really about that whole same concept, but it's focused on organizations and companies today. And how can you create a culture that fosters opportunities for employees to put themselves on the hook and take responsibility for big problems and big things and you know the day-to-day -day work, make it meaningful, make it matter. Um, one of the things that I, he's talked about this a lot, um, in different places and different books, but one of the things that I took from that, that I was thinking about a lot is the idea of being on the hook for something that that is actually a good thing. It's something we're scared of a lot of times we don't want to do, but, um, you can turn that around and, uh, that's where you get meeting. That's when life starts to matter. That's when it's significant. Um, so you really want to try to put yourself on the hook. And there was a little story he told about, uh, bakeries in Turkey where you can, come in and order two loaves of bread, one for yourself, and you leave one and they actually literally physically put it on the hook uh, for someone else who might come along and be hungry or in need. So you're kind of taking responsibility for them. So trying to put those two together, trying to live that out and, you know, see how it affects our culture and our work at Driver Reach. Well, that's really cool. And two books, uh, The Man's Search for Meaning is definitely one that uh, it's it's moving and it's deep and it's it's probably one that I'll read more than once. And then I haven't read the Seth Godin one, but I do like Seth Godin a lot. So, uh, in fact, if it's something new, I just I've missed it. So I'm looking forward to to reading that as well. Thank you uh, for that. And you know, as I as I said earlier, you've been a part of Driver Reach uh, and, and the industry since January of 2017. 
What was it that you know attracted to the trucking industry and, and to this opportunity in particular? What was your background leading into it? So my background is in software development, uh, 20 plus years and really a host of different verticals, different industries. Um, and there's four things that really made me excited about driver reach and about the trucking industry in general. The first is uh, probably the most obvious, I think, at least as you get later in your career, uh, what really matters in a job is the people that you're going to work with. So I met you, we started having conversations, uh, we started talking about what you were trying to do in the industry, what you thought the opportunity for technology was, and uh, you know how we could work together and what kind of a team we could you know pull together for that. And uh, that's exciting, right? That you want to find, I felt like you and I connected on a lot of things and we had, you had a vision that I could come in and help bring my background in software and technology to. And then like, oh, I think we see thing, the world in a similar way a lot of times and what kind of a team and what kind of people can we pull together uh, to work on this? And th that's just super exciting. And so that was the first one that was a big step uh, <laughs> toward making the leap. And then I think, you know, it's, it's kind of ties into the book questions. Like I want to work on something that matters. Like I, I don't want to <laughs> just work on ad clicks, you know, or, uh, you know, clickbait headlines or anything like that. I want to solve real problems. And I think that trucking is a place that's like essential linchpin to everything, uh, in the U S economy and in the world economy too, you know, moving goods around the country is absolutely essential to anything you're going to do in business or life. <laughs> and in our country, trucking is the key means of doing that. We have trains and planes and ships and other things, but trucking is really going to get it uh, from the dock to the house or to the <laughs> you know store or, or wherever. And so that that was a big one. Uh, sorry, got a lot of things here. Uh, the, the, the third one was that uh, my previous background in uh, a regulatory environment for healthcare had shown me that like for business, regulatory environments and especially for technology are really intriguing. You know, we put regulations in place for a reason um, and people want to comply with the regulations, but it's often difficult or uh, painful for business owners uh, or consumers to comply with regulations. So that to me is a perfect place for technology. If you can get something that's important uh, that needs to happen, but is difficult and painful for people to do, then technology can come along and make that easier, help it get it organized, automate some things, uh, take the tedium out of it, make make complex problems possible, all that sort of thing. And then the final one, uh, uh, there just seemed like there was a big white space uh, for technology in the trucking industry. You and I talked a lot about that. Um, there was a, I think it's it's even like, it's different now seven years later than it was seven years ago, but there's still plenty of open space where people are a little bit, have been a little bit slower to adopt technology but there's a growing wave of momentum that you can feel. They understand that software is the key uh, to us doing more with our business and succeeding more. And that's super exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely a deficiency in this industry versus other more innovative and progressive industries. But we are getting there, you know, and and I know we we as Driver Reach has come a long way. But how would you describe the evolution of, of Driver Reach from those early days seven years ago to today? Yeah, it has changed a lot. Um, I. When I think back over the like early days, even really the first four or five years of our existence, I think were heavily focused on recruiting and hiring. And part of that was uh, the macro economy. I think there was a sense of desperation for drivers everywhere. And so that created an opportunity where if all other things are equal for trucking companies, whoever's got the best technology and the best recruiting tech uh, can win those drivers and hire more drivers and succeed more in business. So, um, that was the big thing uh, early on, and we put a lot of our initial product focus on that. There's obviously a regulatory compliance component there, but um, it, it was secondary to to recruiting. I think some big macroeconomic forces um, and even some smaller economic things with uh, you know spot freight rates going up and down and, and things like that have caused uh, that you know desperation for drivers and focus on recruiting and hiring to be not quite in the forefront of everyone's mind. It hasn't gone away. There, I think there's still a high demand for drivers, especially really good, safe drivers, um, reliable drivers. But you know, now there's a little bit more focus on like, we got to get our compliance house in order, uh, make sure we're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and uh, avoiding audits and avoiding lawsuits and you know all that sort of thing. Make sure we're doing things right uh, in this current economy. That'll keep us around uh, for the next you know, big wave of, you know, upswing in the overall macro economy. Well, I say all the time that recruiting in, in this highly regulated industry, recruiting and compliance go hand in hand. 
Yeah. And I and I know that uh, a recent compliance related product release was was announced and it sounds like something of significant relevance. Maybe can you explain what that is and and why it's so important? Absolutely. Uh, we are super excited about this. We have just released uh, our new DQ file checklist tool. Um, it's going to help customers get all their ducks in a row. Like I mentioned, all the I's dotted and T's crossed, um, be able to uh, maintain, build and maintain their DQ files through the recruiting process. And then as they continue to employ drivers, um, there's really nothing quite like it on the market today. We're really excited about it. Um, it's exactly the type of tool that I was talking about earlier when I said regulatory environments are intriguing because it takes something that's painful and confusing and difficult and it makes it easier and more organized and uh, lets people who, who are struggling to keep up get things in order and grow their company. Yeah, it's something uh, as as this was being uh, built over the you know the last uh, several months, it's 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 something that's very I'm very passionate about and have been, you know, for a long time and knew that eventually we would be able to turn uh, get back into making making sure that compliance was a was the foundational element that it that it really needs to be in any in any platform that's involved in recruiting uh, CDL drivers you know, in yep. this highly regulated industry. It's certainly, uh, as you touched on, it's a greater focus with fleets today. We've recognized it on this show. We've enjoyed a number of experts uh, on the topic, compliance specifically, uh, as the industry faces really considerable pressure from plaintiffs' attorneys seeking ever-increasing you know, verdicts and settlements. How do you feel this DQ file checklist will help carriers eliminate that risk or vulnerability that they have otherwise? Yeah, I mean, I think trucking companies want to do the right thing with respect to the law. Um, and most of us acknowledge that there are, as I mentioned, reasons that these regulations get put in place. But it's a pain and not to mention a mess of confusion uh, and misinformation out there. So if you're running a trucking company today, there's a lot of, ri lot of risks that are outside your control. In any given situation, for example, you don't know what other drivers on the road are going to do. You don't know what, how the weather is going to increase the chance of an accident, etc. It's an unfortunate reality that accidents are going to happen to some company somewhere. And sometimes those accidents are going to involve tragic outcomes. When that occurs, the legal system is going to want to know how you behaved uh, in running your trucking company in the areas that you can control. So are all the drivers up to date with their licenses and physicals? Uh, was the doc who did their physical actually in the National Registry? Did you pull all the clearinghouse queries at the right time? Uh, did you run all the MVRs and background checks You know that might have revealed a safety concern before you hired this driver. If you do all the things that the regulations require and you hire and employ better drivers, then you improve your odds for avoiding those bad situations that are out of your control. And you protect yourself uh, from the legal system it, You know when something happens that you couldn't have foreseen. So um, you and I have talked a fair amount over the years about nuclear verdicts. I know that's been a topic on this show a few times, um, but I also think there's a host of less than nuclear outcomes that can still wreak havoc on a business, even audits, uh, uh, you know, fines, fees, uh, smaller non-nuclear settlements, you know, all that kind of thing. And that brings a lot of stress and distraction and fines and, uh, you know, keeps you from doing the important work of your trucking company. So if we can make that easier, if we can make sure that you're uh, organized, help you get organized, like you're going to feel a lot better, sleep better at night and your company's going to succeed more. Well, and I know I totally agree. And I think kind of to your point, you really have when it comes to um, the vulnerabilities that you have, there are there are compliance related vulnerabilities that we're addressing here with this DQ file checklist. And then there are behavioral related vulnerabilities that you have less control over because it's the behavior of the driver, generally speaking. Uh, not that you have no control because you have some and obviously properly vetting drivers through the process can help and properly training and coaching through their tenure can help. But what you have 100% control of is the, the contents of the driver qualification file. Are they thorough and complete each and every time? And it's really easy to do when you leverage technology. And that's what gets me so excited about you know solving that problem. So fantastic, uh, fantastic release. But I was also going to say there's an educational component to this as well. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Certainly, be happy to. So the thing about regulations is that they change from time to time, and every employee in the company isn't talking to a lawyer to find out the latest and greatest every month or every year. So what happens is processes and procedures 
get passed down through a company through the grand uh, oral tradition like Homer in the Odyssey or something. <laughs> but we've all played the game of telephone when we were kids, and we've seen how well that works for accuracy and correctness when someone tells someone uh, the thing and then they tell another person and they tell another person, your likelihood of following those regulations correctly uh, goes down and down and down. Um, over the years at DR, we've talked to a lot of different safety apart departments and a lot of general counsel and a lot of specialized attorneys and partners in the DOT space. And I can tell you that they do not all have the same ideas about what the law says and how that law should be applied. So with the checklist, we wanted to build direct links to all the actual regulations uh, that apply to a given checklist requirement uh, right into the interface. So it's easy to click through, read it for yourself, or if you're arguing with your general counsel or your safety director, <laughs> who's probably not wrong, but might be thinking about a different and related law um, that doesn't apply to this particular issue, then you can direct your questions right to the source. You can show them what's there. Um, we've had experiences where uh, there was one attorney that we were talking to one time who insisted uh, on his interpretation of the law. And after four rounds of back and forth, we found out he hadn't actually read the law. He had read the guidance for the law. <laughs> and so once we showed him, oh, you got to go a step deeper, read the actual regulation. It's a lot clearer. And then, the, oh, we found agreement and we moved forward and helped that company a lot. So we wanted to, I'm sure that's uh, not an isolated incident. I'm sure a lot of companies and employees out there are facing those sorts of things. And we wanted to make it really easy for them to get educated. And I think that's a really valuable tool. That's something that I'm excited about as well. And, and you know, that's another thing that we've talked about you know, uh, for years about having access to specific, you know, links to the regulations, because again, we're, you're, you're in an industry where there's a lot of rules, there's a lot of nuance and, and it's important to get it right. One of my favorite quotes, and I, you, you know, where I'm going with this probably with Mark from Mark Twain, it's, it's not what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know that just ain't so. And it's so common that, uh, people are misinformed, uh, and so they're wrong, and it's so valuable to have access to to the source. This is the source of truth. That's where we all go for it. And so, yeah, I think that's a really good idea, and it's a really good tool. So anxious to hear the feedback uh, from, and then really just the improvement in education that I think this will uh, afford, you know, customers of Driver Reach. Yeah, it's been positive so far. We did a small alpha with a couple companies, and then we did a little bit more expanded beta uh, with a larger set of our customer base. And now uh, we're live for the the whole shebang. So uh, we're hoping uh, that it's going to be really well received. We're expecting uh, that it will be, and we're excited to see you know where it goes from here, what kind of feedback we get, and what we build next. Well, and 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 speaking of next, what's what's next for Driver Reach? How do you how do you expect the company to continue to evolve through the next? handful of years. Any uh, crystal ball? <laughs> I don't know about a crystal ball, but uh, I definitely think there's some big themes and some uh, there's some certainty with a lot of flexibility there too. We're going to continue to focus on solving the biggest problems that are in our scope, and that's recruiting, hiring, and compliance. Innovate and iterate has been our mode uh, from the beginning, and we're going to keep doing that sort of thing. So when we solve one class of problems in that space, it reveals another layer and then we'll focus on that and we learn about another issue um, and we'll keep refining and smoothing and making our existing sort of core more powerful, more efficient, uh, able to do uh, more in a simple interface that everybody can understand and use more quickly, that kind of thing. Um, if we do that, it's really hard for the competition to keep up with us because we just keep layering a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and it makes us an obvious choice for customers who want to level up. But beyond that, like just in continuing to improve our core, I think like reporting insights is one thing that I'm really excited about. Um, I think there's a dearth in the industry of um, uh, good reporting. Uh, so uh, we're going to build intuitive reports and tools that create actionable aha moments for our customers and help them be more successful. Um, I don't think anybody's really doing this very well with reports. You have reports that give you a lot of data, but they don't necessarily give you actionable insights. So we're starting to brainstorm there. Uh, we're thinking about 2024 of that being a big focus. And uh, I'm excited to see what we're going to come up with. And then the, the other big theme that I know we're going to do more of is just part, building partnership e ecosystems. So as you have said many times here on the show, we are a system of record um, for data and documents. And there's so much ongoing opportunity for innovation and improvement within our lane of recruiting, hiring, and compliance. But there's still tons of other related problems 
They're outside our core scope that companies need to solve and they can work in concert with our solutions. So building out more of a partner ecosystem, more integrations in the safety risk management space, learning management systems, lead gen advertising, background checks, transportation management systems, retention tools, et cetera. I think we can work with all of these other companies and we can build a, you know, an overall platform ecosystem that's just blows people's minds and lets uh, small and medium sized and large trucking companies do more than they could do without it. Um, when we build relationship and leverage bigger and better ecosystems, it's going to make our customers more badass. And that's what I'm here for. Well, I love that. And, and, and as we all know, you know, there's competition in this space, which is a good thing. Uh, there is a certain company that had a monopoly for over a dozen years. Uh, they were about as anti-competitive as possible. Uh, but it is encouraging that, uh, that, that the industry, you know, really, I think, benefits from having competitive options in the area of recruiting and compliance. So that's not really, a, I mean, I guess it's not really a question. It's more of a, of, a, of a comment. And I would expect that you'd probably agree with that, that it's, it's, it's better for everyone. It sharpens us. It sharpen, it makes for a better experience for both drivers and, and, uh, and customers. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say building partnership ecosystems. Monopolies stagnate and competition or co-opetition, as we sometimes like to say, uh, leads to innovation and improvement. Uh, the trucking industry is plenty big. Um, it's big enough that con competition is always going to come to it, but competitive landscapes don't have to be zero sum or winner takes all. We, we want to go a step further and build intentional interconnection possibility a variety with other great companies that are out there. And we're going to approach and think about and solve problems differently than others are going to. Um, and there's room to build complex interactions between tech and that turns into virtuous cycles of innovation. I think whenever you get that sort of thing happening where there are different answers to how to solve the problem that are more custom for different uh, demographics of companies, the customer wins. So we are obsessed with our customers and we want to help them win. So that means being competitive and being different. Well, that's a uh, well said. And I think just because this is probably, we've got time for our last question. I'm going to use the deeper dive question. And this is actually uh, a question that was recently posed at a TCA profitability session by one of the participating carriers. And the question was, and this is in, in relation to uh, to driver reach versus another platform out there. How, the question was, how secure is my data? Is it being shared with or made available to anyone outside of my organization? That's something that I know is uh, you're passionate about. What, what, how would you respond to that question? Yeah, but then there's another phrasing in that question uh, that I think is really interesting. So they, they said made available to anyone outside my organization. And I think this part of the question points to another issue in our industry. I don't think this is exactly about security and data security, but I think this is about hurting customers' chance of success or hurting the industry in order to make a buck. The effects of this issue can be really sneaky and easy to dance around for the companies that are doing it. But if you ask the right questions, it becomes very clear what's happening. So first of all, I want to say unequivocally that we do not share our customers' data with any other companies. Our customers are in control of which other companies can be integrated with their accounts and what kind of data will flow in and out. So the better question then becomes, instead of do you sell or share my data, is do you make money <laughs> by using my data to cause harm at the industry? And in this particular case, the harm that I'm talking about is driver churn. So our competitors do build a marketplace that makes money off of driver churn. Um, and this is why our obsession with customer success is really critical and the first and foremost valuable first and foremost value uh, for every decision that we make. When you make customer success the number one guiding principle in all of your decisions, then the cycles from the ecosystems that we create in partnership with other companies, I think are more likely to be upward virtuous cycles versus negative downward spirals that hold the whole industry back. Well, to your point, a business model that's predicated on, you know, exacerbating turnover and then generating revenue off it. That's, uh, I just have an ethical, you know, problem with that. And I'm sure, you know, you do as well. And I know that's why that's just not how we choose to operate. I don't think that's in the best interest of the uh, industry. And that's really what was shared uh, in uh, in response to that question at that session. But I still thought it was, uh, 
it was it was relevant. You're, there's no better person here at Driver Reach to ask that question than you. So, um, but but Sam, uh, just thank you so much for joining us today. I'm I'm really grateful for that cold winter day in late 2016 when you agreed to join Driver Reach in its infancy. I uh, I appreciate your friendship as well as your dedication to making a difference in this highly regulated industry we know and love. Right back at you. Appreciate you having me here. Appreciate the seven years of working together. I'm excited to see what comes next. And thanks for joining me for another episode of Taking the High Road and for spreading the word to your industry peers. We really appreciate it. And remember, you could submit any questions or comments, including those which may appear on upcoming Deeper Dive segments at podcast at driverreach.com. And don't forget to rate and review Taking the Higher Road, whatever platform you use to listen. Until next time, thank you for taking the higher road. 